Hello and welcome back to part two of, I want to say how to draw Pasadena City Hall, but I mean, I don't know anybody who like specifically sets out to draw Pasadena City Hall. So um, we're, we've learned in the last one how to do the, the left hand wing. And so in this one, I'm going to skip ahead to this middle section because the, the wing is really one of the least detailed parts of this, uh, this drawing. And I kind of fast forwarded through a little bit of the uh, line work where I'm just defining out some of the lines. What I'm doing here is I'm taking a Q-tip and putting a little bit of, uh, of extra soft charcoal on it. And very lightly, I'm just shading around in the sky around this little ornamental thing on top. I'm not going to match exactly the sky because there are a few kind of fluffy clouds behind there. And I want this thing to have kind of a glow to it. So I just did that kind of light and then moved on. Um, we're going to be skipping around some of the line work here because I don't like, I, I can't really teach a technique on how to draw a straight line. And that's really all I'm doing there is just outlining little doors and windows and whatnot. So what I'm working on here, is one of the most important parts of the whole drawing. Um, it's this dome. Now the dome has these oddball shingles on it and if we wanted we could go we could try a hyper realism approach where we draw every single little shingle one at a time. Um, I, I think that's a waste of time for a drawing in this style um, and I'll explain a little bit more about the style a little bit later. Uh, a way to get around that is I'm going to start with hard charcoal and I'm going to make um, some light lines, but I'm going to give them a little bit of definition. So what I mean by that is I'm using a light touch, but I'm kind of using a scrubbing motion so that the lines are dark, but not too dark. And I'm just going to draw little lines in a diagonal that have the slightest bit of curve to them. And I'm going to do that across the entire dome. And then whenever I'm done with that, I'm going to go the opposite direction and we're going to make kind of a crosshatch little thing here. And that way we can kind of cheat our way around having to do individual shingles. And you can see that I'm kind of jumping from one section and then moving like an inch or two in the, in the middle direction. And the reason I'm doing that is to make sure that my lines stay mostly parallel. So what can happen whenever you're doing this is if you start on one corner and then you start drawing parallel lines all the way across, you're going to find that by the time you get to the right hand section, your lines have slowly shifted over time and over that distance to where they're no longer parallel. They, they kind of uh, start taking weird directions. And that's, that's really common because as you move across the page, your stroke slightly changes. So the way I get around that is I draw thicker parallel lines, meaning I'll draw one in maybe the lower left-hand section. Then I'll draw a line parallel to that in the middle section and then fill the lines in in between. And that just keeps me on track. Uh, so I'm going to start doing that here. And this is just the base layer of this dome. One thing I have to keep in mind is these lines are not straight and they don't all have the same curve. So some of them on the lower left hand side has a curve that's steeper and the one whenever you get to the middle part of the um, the dome, it's more elongated. It's more um, it's closer to horizontal than diagonal. Um, I, I could probably explain that better. I guess that the way to explain it better is that the angle changes and the reason is because the perspective changes as we're seeing the dome head on the lines appear to be a little bit more uh, of a shallow angle. Then as we get to the left and right hand sides, they become a little bit steeper. So I'm gradually changing those angles while trying to keep as parallel as I can. And I've, for just a little bit, I turn the paper at like maybe a 45 degree angle because it, it I'm more comfortable drawing that way. Um, but I don't like to do that all the time because if you always keep your paper stationary and you're, you're always keeping it at the same angle, you will learn over time how to draw at that angle. And so as more time passes, you learn how to, uh, to draw specific lines, even in areas where your hand's not comfortable. So the reason I, I usually keep my paper straight up and down like this is just a, a matter of stability. So, I'm just going to continue doing this all the way across the dome. 
and then this is basically just the first layer. What I'm going to do after that, and we'll, we'll get to that in detail here in just a little bit, is we're going to go over this with a blending stump and we're going to add some shadows with, um, with some hard charcoal. And then we're going to start shading this with basically like little dots. And that's going to make it appear like it has shingles rather than just two sets of, of crossing perpendicular type lines. So whenever I'm doing a drawing like this, every single thing that I do is done in layers. Um, I usually start out by doing things light and I get a little bit darker and a little bit darker and then I start refining with you know some deeper shadows, some lighter highlights, but it's always done in layers. The same way that like say Bob Ross would do an oil painting or a watercolor artist would, would do theirs in, in layers as well. We're doing the same thing with charcoal and it's not, um, I, I don't know, it, it's a different art form, yes. But the, the styles and the techniques are basically the same as painting. We're just using different shades of gray and black in order to, to get that. So anyway, I, here's where I have changed directions. And we're going to start doing the same exact thing we were just doing, except perpendicular to the lines we just drew. So now we'll have sort of this basic crosshatch. We, obviously we're going to skip through that so we're not sitting there through 15 minutes of me drawing intricate stupid lines. <laughs> but now that we've got that, I have hard charcoal in that I'm using now, but it is the darkest hard charcoal pencil that I've got. So if you have a hard charcoal or hard graphite that's making super light gray lines, um, it may be worth it to switch to a medium pencil. Uh, I just so happen to have one hard charcoal pencil that draws basically like a medium does. Now if I didn't have that, I typically don't use medium pencils. I usually, um, if I need a medium uh, dark gray or whatever, instead of using a medium pencil, I will use either a blending stump with extra soft charcoal put on it, or I will use more pressure with hard charcoal or just extremely light pressure with extra soft charcoal, um, but I, I typically don't like working with medium pencils. I, I like to use hard charcoal and extra soft charcoal because they're, they're opposite ends of the spectrum and I can manipulate those to be the shades that I want. So I'm going over this left hand side and I'm putting in the, the first of those big shadows and this is um, the deepest of those that happen on the roof and I'm just getting those in place and then I'm working my way around the edges of this dome because there's more of kind of a highlight along the middle and a little bit on the sides that are way lighter than this. But this nice deep gray tone here, almost black, is what's going to make this really stand out against this softer, uh, fuzzier, fluffier sky. And so I'm kind of working my way around and you'll notice that occasionally I use um, lines to, to kind of go over my outline. So I'm using longer strokes. But then whenever I'm doing, um, whenever I start doing the shading itself, I'll start doing that with small little circles. And the reason I use circles is because we still want to give this the effect of having individual shingles across this roof. And those circles will kind of trick the viewer into thinking that, that I drew these individually. When in fact, I did not. I did not do that and I would not do that. The only time I would get that detailed is if I'm going for hyper-realism, which I've mentioned a couple in a couple videos, eventually we will do a hyper-realistic um, drawing of some sort, uh, but it's it takes so long to do hyper-realism and the payoff for me personally isn't worth it. I mean, it looks neat. It gets people to look at your work when you do it in a video or you post it on Twitter or Reddit or whatever. Um, but that has never, ever translated into a commission for me, whereas things like this do. Uh, it, may, it may work out different for you, and if it does, then absolutely draw each individual shingle one at a time if you want. So now I've got a blending stump in hand, and what I'm doing is going over the lines that I just scrubbed in with a pencil in order to take out the pencil marks. And that's going to leave a smoother um, tone on the paper. It's going to leave a smoother texture on the paper. 
and that's going to make it look more realistic than drawn because once we start removing these uh, these pencil marks then everything kind of blends together um, I'm going to go back in with that hard charcoal again and now I'm going to darken up the left hand side of that just to make it look a little bit deeper in fact actually I think there I switched to extra soft I think because I need a, a really black area here to the blacker that is the deeper this whole thing is going to look but I just need it in a very small section so I finish off that little shadow and I bounce back up to the top and really the only thing I'm worried about here is getting the shape of this uh, dome correct and that's why you see me taking so much time to make sure that it's not lopsided that these lines are perfectly round rather than being kind of wavy and shaky so now I'm going to go into scrap paper, which is just off camera. Um, I really need to get that on camera at some point so you can see me doing it. But all I've done is I've just scribbled a bunch of extra soft charcoal on scrap paper. And then I'm loading up my, um, my blending stump with that. I'm just running it through there on all sides to get it really, really black. Then I'm going to go back up into the dome and I'm going to use that blending stump just like it's a pencil. And I'm going to start laying in um, a lot of my shading here. Now you'll notice that I'm shading in the same direction as those lines that I drew. And this is where we're going to start building that illusion of shingles, is I'm just going to pull down the shading in that direction. Then we can go back in a little bit later and shade the opposite direction or start putting in dots or whatever. And that's going to give the roof the illusion of texture like we've drawn each of those individual little shingles in. Now once we get to the middle, we've got, the, this area is going to be just a little bit lighter than the rest of the roof. And so I can shade in the traditional manner, meaning that I can kind of shade around the shape of that roof without having to worry about drawing individual lines with a blending stump or whatever. And the reason that I can do that is because we can see through what I'm doing here into the outlines that I made earlier. So we're going to have each of those lines that we made still slightly poking through uh, this shading that I'm doing right now, which means that we can go back in after this whole thing is shaded and we can draw in those lines, those little perpendicular lines again. And that's just a layer of, uh, of refinement. Now you can already see, even with this little bit that I have done now, you can already see that it looks really sharp compared to that background. And it makes it look like it pops way forward and makes the sky look like it's way in the background. And that sharpness contrasting with that fluffy um, kind of hazy background is what's going to add an element of realism to this drawing. So now I'm going to go to the right hand side of the dome and you can see I'm, I'm kind of being almost careless with the way I'm, I'm throwing in this, this shading. But I'm still going in the direction of some of my little crosshatch marks. I'm not drawing them in one at a time. I'm just more kind of throwing them in there kind of quickly to get the, uh, the overall tone and the overall shade of that dome correct, to make sure the light's in the right place, to make sure the shadows are in the right place. And then once those are in there, I want to pick out some spots that um, have a little bit darker areas to them, and I'm going to draw those in with the blending stump individually. Now we're not even close to being done here, but it's already looking like it has texture just by throwing in those four or five little lines in the middle. So I'm going to jump up to the top and do the same thing there. And there's going to be two little sections to the right and left of that middle um, that's going to catch a little bit more light than the rest of it. And therefore, it's not going to have quite as much texture. You're not going to really see the, sh the individual shingles quite as much there. That's why I put that right in the middle, but I'm not really concentrating on it through the right and the left just yet.
Now very carefully I'm just going around the top part of the roof and blending away even more pencil stroke marks. Now I'm going to go back up into the crosshatch area and start laying in those little stroke marks going the opposite direction and I'm just adding a layer of refinement where I'm starting to, to sharpen up these details and add a little bit of texture because the main shading part of this is done now for, for the most part. Now it's time to add layer two, which is going to be the details. Then layer three will be uh, refinement and sharpening and adding little highlights here and there. And that's once we get that put in place, then this dome is pretty much done. It's kind of funny because this does look like a section that I spent just a massive amount of time on, but really it, it didn't take all that much time. The, the thing that took me the most time is the floor that's below this. So now we're going to grab um, that, that hard charcoal again, um, and it's the softer of my hard charcoal, so it makes darker lines. And I'm just going to lightly go over each of these little crosshatch marks and I'm going to start sharpening those up a little bit and adding in um, uh, basically the same crosshatch marks that we had before, except I'm just kind of picking some out that need to be a little bit darker. Then I'm going to ease up pressure as I get toward the, the middle because those don't cast shadows that are quite as hard. But once we get these in, this is what's going to make this look like it's been layered and shingled. but it's really important to, to have a steady hand here. I, I know that's not something that I can really teach um, to just say, here, have a steady hand and do this, but I mean, honestly, that's, it's gonna take some practice to do it, but you do need, uh, it's what this section boils down to. Have a steady hand, start laying in these little crosshatch marks, and then we'll go back in with a Tombow eraser in just a little bit and kind of erase in little highlights here and there to individualize some of these shingles. I'm going to do it the opposite way. See how now I'm going from uh, left to right. Now I'm going from bottom to top and we're going kind of perpendicular. Now as we get into this lighter section it's where I've got to be a little bit more careful because these lines are going to be really prominent. So I'm using a light touch and doing the same exact thing that I just did on the side. I'm just being a little bit more careful about it. Now what you can't see from this angle is as I'm doing this, I need a really, really sharp point on this pencil. Well, as you draw a line, the pencil becomes dull, but it does have the effect of making the opposite side of the pencil sharp because you're wearing off one side of the pencil and the other, the other side of it sharpening up naturally. So I will draw a line and then I will quickly turn the pencil over to find that sharp point the sharpest point of the whole pencil, and I continually do that. So if you watch my right hand as I'm holding the pencil, I'll kind of ease up my pressure and flip the pencil around very quickly, and I continue doing that every time I have to make another one of these sharp lines. I do the same thing a lot with the Tombow eraser. When I need a really sharp point on the eraser to clean things up, to add um, very, very thin, precise highlights, I will pull the eraser across the paper, then turn it slightly so I can find the sharp point on it again. And that's actually kind of rare for me to use a sharp point on one of these drawings because I almost always just use the flat side. Sharp points will typically give you um, more pencil marks, like way more prominent, noticeable pencil marks. And so using the flat side of it uh, makes things a lot smoother. So that's that's typically what I use in pretty much every one of my drawings. So I'm getting close to the end of this dome. I've just flipped around to the right hand side and I'm going to continue doing the little crosshatch marks. And then here in just a second we're going to grab that Tombow eraser and start throwing in a few highlights here and there. And it's kind of amazing to watch it happen 
but whenever I start throwing those in, those little individual shingles just pop out. Now one thing I didn't do is I, I didn't draw those lines all the way across. It's not like one giant continuous line that goes all the way from the left to all the way to the right. Because those shadows are going to be thrown um, a little bit differently and some of them are going to catch more shadow, some of them are, are going to catch more light. So there's no real need for me to draw one solid line that goes from one side of that roof to the other. So here's where I've grabbed my Tombow eraser and I'm just touching the paper and then making a tiny little microscopic flipping motion. So I don't want to erase that all the way down to the paper. I just want to kind of make a, a little tick where I can remove just a tiny bit of the charcoal, just enough to give it um, the, the feeling of a reflection. And then once I get into the middle here, there are a few parts that really catch sunlight hard as we go into this, uh, this reflective side that has a little bit less shadow. So those I can make a little circle mark and take that uh, a lot of charcoal off and make that really bright. But whenever we get into the shadows, we don't want these bright white dots to appear out of nowhere. Um, those can get a little whiter as we get into the more reflective parts, but overall we're just highlighting just some random shingles that, to kind of break up this solid mass. And we're nearing the end of this right now, um, this dome part, but look how much that's changed in just the few minutes that we've been doing it. I mean, I, I understand that for some people who don't do this style of art, this seems like an extremely long time for one section, but it's really not. Compared to some of the hundred hour pieces that I've done, um, this part went together really, really fast. So a person just messaged me on Twitter today and said that um, one of my videos popped up in their recommended section on YouTube today, which was pretty cool. I mean, I understand that the personal alg algorithm and stuff like that comes into play, but the suggested video popping up in somebody's feed is a pretty cool step forward. Um, this may sound goofy like two years from now, if, if for some reason I end up getting like a big channel or whatever, and I'm talking about 106 people you know, following me, which took months of begging people to click the subscribe thing for me to reach 100. Um, but that would be the first instance in which my uh, one of my videos popped up in somebody's feed without me asking them to come to the channel. So that to me is exciting. I, I don't know if that means anything to anybody else, but to me, I was pretty excited about it. So right here, we're going to jump from the dome to this very top um, part of, I, I think about it in my head as the top part of the cake. It's like a wedding cake and that's like the top part. Um, but I'm putting in one line of shadow underneath here and then I'm just blending that out with a blending stump to again take away the pencil marks that I just threw in. And that's going to create a separation between the top part of the dome and the bottom part of this, you know, this little extra room that's up here, this little bell tower or whatever that happens to be. And once we get up into this, um, this is actually not detailed at all. Um, it's basically three rectangles that represent these little door slash window ways. Um, we'll just end up throwing in the sides of the building material, stone or whatever that is, cinder blocks or whatever, uh, with just a blending stump. It, it takes no effort at all to get this little section done. I mean, compared to the dome that we just did, this is pretty simple stuff right here. So basically all I'm doing is I'm adding in a couple of baseline shadows, which I think represent the bottoms of those windows or whatever. If not, it's some railing. And then we're going to build off of those, making sure that every line that we do up here is really, really straight. So you notice that I've got an outline there, but the outline is not perfect. In fact, it's far from it. It's really rough and wavy. That's because I put together these outlines really quickly. And all I'm doing when I do an outline is giving myself a, 
a really rough idea of where these things go, like these windows. And I want to make sure that the dome is in the right spot and the, um, the little bell tower is in the right spot too. But I don't do precise outlines. I just put, it, it's just a very rough process. And then that's like layer one. Layer two is what I'm doing now, which is putting in some of these first details. Um, and then this is basically a form of refinement. I'm refining the outline by putting in the details. At some point in the near future, I will do a video dedicated to just outlines, to just showing you how to do the rough sketch of each of these. The reason I haven't done it yet is because I don't quite know how I want to present it because there's several different styles and techniques that you can do when doing outlines. Um, one of them is the grid method, which is one that I would suggest everybody learn. Uh, one is just flat out eyeballing it. And unless you're super talented at art, I don't suggest eyeballing outside of just practicing. Because when you eyeball something and you get it done, it may seem perfect in your eyes, but somebody else is going to look at your drawing and think, that looks weird. Like the, the eyes in this person are kind of lopsided and uncanny. Um, the fur or the ears in this dog looks lopsided and, and out of place. And that's because just straight eyeballing it typically isn't the best way to do it. Um, but yeah, there's grid, there's eyeballing. There is some people use projectors. Some people will outright trace. Um, I don't actually find that offensive or quote unquote cheating in any way. Um, I don't personally use that style or that technique, but I also... I, I'm, I don't think it's intelligent <clears throat> for anybody to refer to any sort of technique in art as cheating because it's not a competition. It's not like you're just outright copying somebody else's work, unless you are, in which case that's beyond cheating. That's weird and theft. <laughs> so, <laughs> so don't be doing that. But the point is, the overall point, there's several ways to go about getting your initial outline in and in every one of those ways that outline just serves as a rough guide and then all the detail that you put into it that's where the real art comes in and so we'll go over several of those in a video at some point in the near future and i will teach you how to do everything from grid work to eyeballing to projector work um, I don't think I can do any tracing because this paper is so big and it's not see-through. So it's not like I can do any tracing with this, but I can show you methods to do it. Um, if you're going to do stuff like that, make sure you're using your own reference photo so that you're not just outright snagging somebody else's work. But yeah, anyway, uh, I, I apologize for rambling on about stuff like this, but... Um, uh, what else can I say about this tower? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> basically it boils down to draw this with a steady hand. So here's where things start to, to look a little bit more 3D and a little bit more realistic. I'm jumping up into this little window and I'm using the darker of my, um, my hard charcoal, but you can use extra soft for this. I'm just, I'm just using the darker of my hard charcoal pencils and using a lot of pressure in order to get a blacker look. But you're, I'm drawing in the top and the left side of that left hand window and filling that in is just basically one big block of black rectangle. I'm going to do the same thing with the middle here in a minute and I, I apologize for not being able to see past my hand here but this was really precise work and I couldn't exactly do it with my hand out of the way. Um, and then I'm going to jump up into the topmost dome and all I'm doing is lightly adding in a shadow ridge across that top. Now we can already see that makes the window look kind of receded and it makes it look like it's in that little section. So now whenever we go back in with a blending stump and start taking out these pencil marks, it's going to look a lot more realistic very, very quickly. dropping a little extra shadow along that left hand side to make it look like it curves rather than is, than is just a flat 2D object.
I want to grab a Tombow eraser and this is where I use this eraser the most is I will clean up these little edges because this this building has a lot of little balconies and railings and decorative parts that catch a lot of sunlight and so anytime I overlap that with a pencil mark or with a blending stump or whatever I need to go back in with a Tombow eraser and erase those marks away so that those tiny little thin areas like those hand railings will look like they're catching and reflecting more sunlight. I need those to be really clean and really thin. Now, as we get to this middle window, the light's gonna change. So you got three sections here. The one on the left, which carries a lot of shadow because it's in more shadow. The middle window is going to be a little bit lighter and a little bit more see-through. And the one on the right is going to have um, sharper edges on it and we'll, we'll you'll see what I mean whenever I get those in there but you can see through these little windows and these little doorways because they're open faced but each of those three are catching light in different ways so I don't know what that is in the bell tower but I know there's a little lumpy section that's a little bit lighter than the rest of it, so I just threw it in. I'm just literally drawing what I see on the reference photo, and I just know that that area has got a little light section in it. It's probably the devil. I don't know if he hangs out in Pasadena City Hall or not. So now I'm going to grab the Tombow and highlight that a little bit, and then I'm going to clean up the top um, edge of that. You'll see me do that a lot as I go. It's better to clean them up while I'm looking at them so that I don't forget them and forget to clean it up later. Now I'm just taking the lightest of my hard charcoal and very, very lightly, barely touching the paper, I'm bringing that little ridge along the bottom of those balconies all together so that they connect. Just a single line, I'm barely touching the paper while I do it. It just needs to barely exist. It's very subtle in that area. Now I'll start working on the side, the, the, uh, the outside edge, um, the surface, I guess is the word I'm looking for. And I don't do that with a pencil because again, I don't want stroke marks here. I want that to be really, really smooth. So I just lay that in with a blending stump and then clean it up with a Tombow eraser. And that's basically what the majority of this drawing boils down to. Lay in the really black areas and the really sharp areas with pencil. All the smooth areas are going to be done with a blending stump and or Q-tips. And then anything that catches a lot of light that has to be sharp and thin and, and like really defined, that's going to be done with a Tombow eraser. And that's what 99% of this drawing boils down to. Now on the outside surface of this uh, little section of this building, I'm taking a massive amount of time to, and it looks like I'm putting in a ton of detail, but I'm really not. I'm, yes, I'm spending a lot of time on it, but I'm, I'm more being careful because this is an expensive commission, and I want to make sure that the details that do exist carry the right shape and don't just look like I slapped them in there and just didn't care about it. So I'm taking a lot of time and a lot of effort to make sure that I get these shadows right and the extra little texture right um, just because I, I just don't want to screw that guy out of money. <laughs> you know, I, It just wouldn't feel right. So I'm taking my time. I'm being very, very careful. If I was doing this drawing just for fun, I probably would have just slapped the the detail in there as quickly as I could just so that I can move on to the next section. And the detail that I'm talking about is that this uh, section of the building, the outside surface has kind of um, what looks to be kind of like a brick pattern. I mean, you, you can't really tell it's there. It's more, like, it's more like there's these little horizontal shadows that go across it, but it's so high in the air that you can't see that there's a massive amount of detail there. So that's why I'm doing that with a blending stump rather than a pencil. I don't want those details to be sharp. I want them to exist, but I want them to be a little bit fuzzy. Also, the dome below it and the face of this building, the middle section, is going to be the focal points, and I don't want the top of this to become a focal point. So I remove a little bit of detail as I go further away from the focal point 
and this is one of those sections that has just a little less detail in it. Yes, it's taken a lot of time, um, but I'm, I'm more taking the time to make sure that the shapes are exactly right, rather than the details being exactly right. So now that I've got that laid in, I'm just going to go over to that third window, which is the final window on this section. And you can see that I'm putting an outline that's a little darker on the bottom and on the right because that's where it's catching more shadow. Now I'd mentioned in another video that if we ever start, you know, making like an income off of uh, YouTube or Patreon or whatever, um, I'm going to get a second camera and I'm going to place that down more at an angle to my left so that you can have the overhead shot when I'm doing things like this that it's easy to see from an overhead shot but then when my hand gets in the way I can go to that angled um, version so that you can see from the side and see exactly what I'm doing it's not it, it's not feasible to do that now like financially but if we ever start making an income from this stuff that will be one of the first things I invest in as a second camera actually two cameras one to replace the extremely bad camera that I'm using now it's a GoPro Hero 6 or something like that, um, but it's starting to die. And then the second camera, I will just get two cameras, one from the top, one from the, uh, the side. And these will be much, much better videos in the future, hopefully. But, hey, I'm working with what I have right now. Making the videos is the number one priority. Getting them to look pretty is something we'll work on as we go. So now we're almost done with this section. Um, for in fact, we're almost done with this top part entirely, um, meaning the, the dome and the section that sits on it. We're almost ready to move entirely past this. So all I'm doing is lightly adding in a ridge shadow across here, and then this section has its own dome but there's no real detail in that dome. It's more like a, almost like a pressed tin or something like that that doesn't have a lot of, like there's no shingles on it. It doesn't have a lot of detail. It just has kind of blobby type shadows. Um, so here in a minute, I'm going to, to skip through a little bit of this at fast forward because it's, I mean, there's not a lot of things to watch here besides just watching me slowly and painfully put this stuff in. But yeah, overall, this, this top section is almost done. We can actually get down into the ornate section that's below it, which I think is a much funner part to draw because there's so many angles, so many straight lines, so many shadows and reflections, and there's just a lot going on in that, that section. So this little ridge, there's like a ridge that happens above the windows, but each one of these windows has also got kind of a ridge that's in between that. It's like in between the top of the window and the ridge that sets above them, there's a secondary ridge that happens. It is extremely thin. Like even if you were looking at this 18 inch by 24 inch drawing in person, it's still a little bit difficult to see both of those ridges unless you're looking for them. But I still want them to be there. I want them to be noticeable to the person who bought the drawing that even if they don't notice it now, they may look at that a month down the line and say, oh my God, I never noticed that tiny little subtle thin detail was in there. And that's what I'm kind of going for whenever I put a bunch of detail into drawings like this. So I'm going back with Extra Soft and I'm just darkening up some of these windows and adding in a little bit of refinement by adding a little bit of a pitch black ridge to each one of these windows and that's going to make these look even more 3D than they already look. Now part of what I'm doing while I'm adding in this dark area is that I'm using that pencil to even out some of the lines to make sure they're perfectly straight. So I'm kind of pulling two jobs there with that pencil. So once I've got those lines straight and I get the extra black in, I'm just very quickly going to make flicking motions with a blending stump in order to pull those dark areas into the rest of the window to add a little bit of flow there. If I just did it and didn't blend these out with a blending stump, it's going to look um, too detailed. 
it's going to become a focal point like I talked about earlier. So I'm just blending away a little bit of that sharpness so that it softens up and doesn't pull the eye up into it. And now as I'm doing that, the, the blending stump gets a little bit dirtier, so it's picking up charcoal. So I can use that to my advantage and start shading in the rest of this uh, surface with the blending stump because it's, since I've already got charcoal on it, it's like having a loaded paintbrush. You might as well use it while it's in your hand. So now I'm going to jump up into this dome and I'm going to put the, the first of these little blobby, they're not highlights, they're just little shadow marks and little ridges that happen along this uh, small dome. So I'm going to throw those in kind of quickly and all I'm doing is just adding in ridge shadows. We'll end up refining that a few times, like two or three times, but we're going to do a lot of that in fast motion here in a minute because it's a really all this section boils down to is throw those in and just refine them over and over until they're the way you like them. But at no point am I putting in really sharp detail in any of this. I just want it to exist. Um, I want it to the shape to be correct and then we can just move on from there uh, because again we don't want that to become a focal point. But we also don't want so little detail that it looks goofy, that it looks like we just slapped it in and didn't care about it. This is the first layer of that refinement that I'm throwing in. I'm just using hard charcoal with a very very light touch and just making short kind of flicking motions with it pulling from the bottom up. And the reason I do that, and this is kind of a good technique um, to remember if you're ever working with thin shadows, is that whenever you go from the bottom up, um, the bottom part is going to be darker than the lighter part if you're making that little flicking motion because you're naturally going to have more pressure at the bottom than you are at the top. And then the way your hand operates while you're making that flicking motion is it naturally wants to pull away from the paper which is going to make the pencil pull away from the paper, meaning your stroke marks are going to be lighter at the top. It is kind of a neat little trick you can do. So let's blow through this real quick. I'm just going to, I, I finickied around with that. Here's the part I wanted to show you. This top ornamental thing is really decorative, but we're not going to spend a lot of time on the decoration. We're going to put a couple of um, what boils down to hyphens, um, just little dash marks, and we're going to be selective about where we put them but we're just going to make these little horizontal dash marks um, in select parts up here. Then we're going to drop down the tiniest shadow, blend it all out with a blending stump, and then we're done with that. But because it's setting where it's setting, and because we're concentrating on putting really defined shadows in specific spots, it's going to look way, way more detailed than it actually is. We know that this thing is going to be made with three or four uh, maybe four or five little dash marks and just a little smudge of shadow. But to the person looking at it, especially for the first time, it's going to look like we just went in there with a magnifying glass and did the most detailed work we could do in order to make this thing look like it's uh, got those little teardrop shapes to them and all that. But no, it really, it's three hyphens and a C-shaped shadow, and that's it. I like to get lost in the details when I'm doing a drawing like this, but I also just feel giddy, almost like a little kid, when I can pull something off like this that takes so little effort to do, but when you see it as an overall piece, it just looks like you spent so much time on it. Now I am being finicky on this because I do want the, the little hyphen marks that we made I want those to be sharp and I want them to be a specific length and I want them to be uniform, meaning that I need them to be parallel to each other. I need them to stop in a certain distance. I need them to be, to be perfectly centered with the dome that sits below it. Um, so that's why I'm, you know, being so finicky with this. But overall, I mean, really, it just boils down to hyphen, 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 C shape shadow. Blend them all together with a blending stump just really lightly maybe touch it up with a, a Tombow eraser just to add a little glint of light on one section of it. That's, that's really it. Yeah, in fact, here's the Tombow eraser. I'm just going to add a tiny little circular ball-shaped highlight 
on the very top. I think I may throw one in on the little middle section there, but that's it. So now I've loaded up that um, blending stump again with a lot of extra soft charcoal. And I'm doing the thing where I just start at the bottom and flick upwards. The bottom part of the shadow is naturally going to be darker. The top part's going to be naturally lighter. And it's going to make the illusion that this has got these little ridges and little, you know, rust stains or whatever that happened over time. And it's already starting to look like it's got texture. And yes, we're being finicky. I mean, I, I'll, I'll admit that. But, but really, when you look at this overall, look how little work we've actually put into it technique-wise. It's a flick here and a little rub there, and that's, that's basically it. So now this top section is pretty much done the dome and the thing that sits above it. So we're going to jump into here in just a minute, um, this section that happens below the dome. Here's where things get complicated. So I'm gonna take a little bit of extra time to explain what I'm doing here, but first I wanna blow through the outline part. So all I'm doing here is I'm taking um, the B graphite pencil and doing a, a darker outline, and then I'm blending that all together with the blending stump just to put a shadow along that ridge. There's nothing special about what I did there. I just threw in the, the shadowed ridge. You can see how rough it is. I'm not worried about it being perfect yet. So what we're gonna slow down for is this door. Inside this door, there are a couple different shades of black and gray, and to get a really smooth dark gray border lining on black um, texture here. I'm just going to basically use this like a coloring book and I'm going to shade this in with hard charcoal making sure that the edges of this doorway stay sharp. Now I'm not super worried about it like if I go outside the lines I can always clean those up with a Tombow eraser but I'm going to make a an effort, a concerted effort, to make sure that I try to stay in the lines as best as possible. I am not putting a ton of pressure here. Notice that the shade of the doorway right now is basically the same shade as that dome. It's going to get a lot darker here in a minute whenever I blend this in with a blending stump. I'm also not worried about filling in every single pinhole with a pencil because I know the blending stump will do that. The blending stump will do two things. It'll smooth this out and it will darken it. So I just wanted to show you this because I think this is where a lot of artists go wrong, a lot of beginning artists, is they try to blacken that thing as hard as they can by putting a ton of pressure on their pencil and just cramming that, that in there until it's as black as they want it to be. But really, I'm just using a light touch, scrubbing it in like a five-year-old with a coloring book, barely touching. Now watch what happens whenever I use this blending stump. Notice how smooth that gets. It darkened up a little. It didn't darken up a ton. It didn't go black, but it, it went pretty dark. We can always darken that up more later. But all we're worried about right here is smooth, 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 and making sure that the outside edges of this little doorway stay straight and sharp. So I'm going to take care of that with a blending stump, and then I'll go back in with a Tombow eraser in just a little bit and clean up the edges. And all I'm doing is just erasing away the edges with a sharp pointed eraser, just pulling down to make sure. It's almost like you're using a pencil, which is basically what you're doing with a Tombow eraser. You're just using a pencil to remove marks rather than to put them on. So now let's jump forward again because this is all outline stuff. All I'm doing is throwing in a couple of outlines to define that doorway. And now here's where we get stupid detailed. So that shadow that happens at the top of that on the underside of that ridge has several ridges to it. There's a shadow, then there's another ridge that catches a little bit of light. So there's a darker shadow under that and so on and so forth. So the way that I'm making this ridged type shadow here is I am I will do one strip that's a dark shadow, then another one that's a little bit lighter, and then another one that's a little bit darker, and they will separate themselves out but look like one collective unit. So you can see me going back here with graphite, and I'm using that because it's way lighter than my, uh, my hard charcoal. 
and I'm basically drawing in the shadow with that. It's extremely rare to see me do that. I rarely use uh, graphite at all. But this building has so many subtle and so many different shadows to it that I need to use graphite in certain sections to get lightness. So basically here I'm going to go into each one of these ridges and each one of these little shadows and I'm just adjusting how dark some are and how, how light others are in order to make sure that these ridges stand out as their own texture. Otherwise it's going to look like I just used uh, a blending stump and dropped down a single fat shadow underneath it and it's not going to look right. I can always sharpen those up with graphite later, which I'm doing here. I'm just taking a, a B graphite pencil and I'm just darkening up that middle shadow and then I'll blend that away with blending stump, which makes it a little bit darker because it's filling in all the textured pinholes of the paper. Then I can clean up the edges with a Tombow eraser and that's basically how we're going to do every shadow on this entire building from here on out. It's going to be dropping in a shadow, modifying it, sharpening it, darkening it, erasing away the edges over and over and over until we get this building shaped exactly the way we want it. And this is why I say there's not going to be many people who's going to say, yeah, I'm going to follow along because I desperately want to draw the Pasadena City Hall. It's extremely ornate. It's extremely challenging. But the way you all benefit is that you get to see a ton of different techniques being used. Even if you're not drawing along with me, um, at least you're going to be able to see me using tons and tons of different techniques. So what I'm doing here is that little ridge that happens above the shadow has kind of an up and down texture to it, meaning there are these little marks that happen that go uh, vertically. So I'm just quickly dropping those in just so that it's not pure white up there. Now I can pull some of that uh, shading from the dome down into those two decorative little statue or whatever those things are, those ornate little pieces that cover the dome. I just close that gap with a blending stump. And now we're going to go into the face of this building and we're going to start dropping in vertical shadows where these little poles and posts are. So those end right underneath the little ornate parts that, that are over the dome. And then it causes a flat section where the doorway is that's just a little bit darker than the rest of that, the face of that building. So I'm just very lightly, and I mean barely touching the paper, adding in the softest gray that I can throw in here. Now this is going to look lopsided right now, and there's a reason for that. So the pole that happens underneath the right ornamental statue thing, whatever that is, the shadow on that one is going to be on the left hand side, which is going to be closer to the doorway. The same thing is going to happen on the other ornamental thing on the left hand side. Its main shadow is going to be on the left hand side of that little ridge, and the right hand side of that is basically, um, it's going to be difficult to see it. So it's going to look lopsided at first until I start adjusting some of these shadows and getting them uh, on the, in the shades and tones that they need to be. So I'm just going back in with a hard charcoal and barely touching the paper, just sharpening up that little ridge shadow. Cleaning it up with the Tombow, just like we talked about before, it's all going to be, it's all going to boil down to that. And now one of the things that we need to keep in mind is that you can see up into that little doorway, meaning you can see the archway on the top of it. So I'm just taking a blending stump and defining that out a little bit so you can see the bottom part of that archway. It's just a little darker than the areas that are around it. Now we go back to what we were talking about a little bit ago, defining shadows, making the ridgeways look a little bit deeper. We'll, we're, we'll see certain shadows that we'll think that needs to be a little bit darker, so we'll darken it up. We'll see other shadows that need to be lightened, and that's this all boils down to that through this entire face, just modification after modification until it gets to the exact tone, shade, shape that we like.
I'm going to start doing some modification on that left hand side one. Now here in just a second is when this front of this face is going to come alive um, because we're going to get enough of these shadows and ridges in place to where this is going to start making more sense. I'm pulling that Tombow eraser across that paper and spinning it in order to sharpen the tip. Um, as I do that, it takes away some of the eraser and leaves me with a flat edge. So I'm using that to sharpen my eraser. That way I can make these extremely thin erasure marks. Because there's a couple of these ridges that catch a lot of sunlight but have no real shadow of their own. They're just pure white stripes. A seven nation army couldn't hold it. I'm sorry, I apologize for that. So I'm just taking graphite, and I don't know if this is an H or B, but I know that I'm using an extremely light touch to barely put the outline of one of those ridges in just to kind of give myself a landmark to say this is where the, the ridge ends, and this is where the flat part of this section begins. Now while I've got this graphite in my hand, I can look up into this ridge and this group of shadows on top and realize that it needs even more modification and more sharpening. So while I have that in my hand, I've decided to go ahead and modify those. And now this is another thing about a drawing like this. There's not really going to be a time where I do a thing, where I draw a section of this and then it's done and I just move on. It's usually going to be, I'll draw it most of the way done and get it mostly finished and then I'll come back and modify it as I do other things. Because there's one thing that I talk about a lot, I don't know if I've mentioned it in a while, um, but I always judge what I'm drawing to what I've already drawn. And I'm constantly watching what I've already drawn and comparing it to what I'm drawing. And so what, what I mean by that is if I were to throw in a doorway that's pitch black right now, it's going to make everything else around it look lighter by comparison. And to correct that, it means I'm going to have to go back into those things I've already drawn and darken those. And so because of that, I'm always going to go back into the things that I've drawn and modify them to make them match the things that I'm currently drawing. All right, let's blast through this too. Um, so I'm just going to finish off some of these ridges doing exactly the same thing I've shown you before. And then I'm going to throw in the first of this ornamental spire looking thing. And I just did that with um, a B graphite pencil, just throwing in extremely light, barely touching the paper, some basic, basic blob shadows that, that are where they need to be. Um, I'm not spending a lot of time with detail on that because Right after I get that thrown in, I'm going to grab the darkest of my hard charcoal. And again, if you, if you don't have one that's this dark, use medium. And I'm throwing in one of the window openings behind it. This almost feels like magic to me because once I get this put in, this shadow of this window or this archway um, stops right at that little ornamental spire. And once I get that in there, it's going to make that spire jump forward pretty dr dramatically. So all I'm worried about here is getting the shape right. I'm getting that archway to be the shape to be correct and I'm making sure it's dark enough. And then that little um, spire looking triangular thing that's in front of it is just going to jump right out. Then I can start modifying that and making uh, the details pop out a little bit more as I go once that window is in place. But the window to me, or the archway, is more important than the actual decorative element that happens in front of it. Now again, since I'm in this area and I'm drawing, you know, along this, these decorative elements, I have to make sure there's separate, um, there's separation between what's behind it and what's in front of it. So I'm taking that B pencil again and modifying this, those shadows a little bit more. Um, then I'm going to go back into the face of this archway. So that's the inside edge that we can see into. And I'm going to drop that in with a blending stump because that's really smooth and just kind of a subtle gray. And then we'll clean that up with a Tombow eraser here in just a minute. 
But the main thing about this is getting this to be a focal point on its own. And that happens by making sure that the gradient we put in here, it's darker on top, it gets lighter on bottom, it's reflecting a little bit of residual light, so it's got this, this little white stripe of light. And once we get that shape and we get that gradient just right, it's one of the things that's going to make this look really realistic on this section of this, uh, this upper, I don't know, third floor area, whatever you want to call this. Those are the details that's going to pull people's eyeballs to them. Now we'll just blend away another, or another, we'll blend away a lot more of these little ridgeline shadows, including the little decorative elements of these little, uh, the spire that's on the left hand side. I keep calling it a spire. I don't actually know what the word spire means. I just know I've heard people use it before and generally in conjunction with something that looks like this. So even if it's not a spire, it's a spire because we're calling it one. So now that we have those put into place, we need a, a way to make that element pop out, the little decorative element. Easiest way to do that is to grab a blending stump and simply darken the area that's behind it. Because this little triangular decorative thing that's on there is going to be much lighter than the areas around it. And so if we put darker areas behind it, it's going to push that forward closer to the viewer and it's going to make this, this whole section that's behind it look like it's actually sitting behind it. And it's going to be yet another element that makes this look 3D. Now taking a B pencil, I think, you can use an H too, it doesn't matter. I'm not really drawing a line along this archway. What I'm doing is using it kind of like a shader and I'm matching the level of gray that's right next to it. And the only reason I'm doing that is to sharpen up the edge. But there won't be a defined line that you can see. It's not like it's outlined or anything. I'm just sharpening up the edge and making it the same shade and same tone as the, the inside part of that archway. All right, so we're nearing the edge of this. So here's where I need to start being pretty careful. Um, this area is kind of poking out and nesting against the sky. And so if I go too far in one direction, I can't really erase that away without damaging the sky behind it. And the sky is very, very difficult to fix because it's so smooth and it's, um, it's, it's a gradient on its own. And it's it, like any mark that we make there is going to be really sharp and difficult to get rid of. So I'm making really, really sure that my lines are true here and that I get them exactly where I want them before I lay them in. So once I get that down, I'm just taking um, one of the graphite pencils and making little subtle ridge line shadows with that rather than the blending stump because I need these to be precise. This is an area where I definitely don't want to mess up in, so I'm definitely taking my time here. Now this is actually a really rare drawing for me. I, I say the word rare a lot, but it's I say it in different with different techniques because there are some that I don't use very often at all. But this is rare in that I I never use graphite. Outside of just using it for outlines, I just don't use graphite because to me it's too shiny. If it catches the light just right, it looks metallic, whereas charcoal doesn't do that. And so I typically don't use graphite at all. But this building, as I mentioned earlier, the shadows in some areas are so soft and so light that I have to use graphite because hard charcoal will just be too hefty. And I, I need these things to be soft and subtle. 
and not um, heavy handed, which charcoal can be really heavy handed. Now we can start pulling in some shadows with the blending stump along the whole left hand side of this, the face of this building. So I'm just going to town. I, I just loaded that up with a little bit of uh, extra soft charcoal and then pulled that blending stump across blank paper to soften that up a little bit so it's not pitch black. Then I can go right into the side of this building and start dropping in these shadows. It's on, the shadows are laying across white, a white painted surface. Now the thing about white painted surfaces is they typically don't show shadow as deep as other types of surfaces do, at least visually to me they don't look as dark. But the other thing is white painted surfaces reflect light from other areas. So if you have another white wall butted up against another white wall, if the one on the left is reflecting light, the one that has, uh, that's on the right that has shadow in it will also catch some residual light, if that makes sense. So basically you're going to have some shadows that get dark in areas, but also are a little bit reflective in others. And it, that is extremely difficult to pull off in a drawing like this because you have to know where that works and where it doesn't visually. It may look one way in a reference photo, but if you attempt that in the drawing, it'll look like you just didn't know how to draw shadows. So I'm always careful about how I do residual light in a lot of uh, these areas. And let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Look at, at the archway on the left-hand doorway in that left-hand arch. The very top part of that has really dark shadows that fade down and get a little bit lighter as they go down, right? Well, the very right-hand section of the, of the inside of that arch is lighter than the outside section and that's because it's catching residual light so it's not just one solid shadow that goes across that whole you know inside of that archway it's got varying degrees of shadow and varying degrees of light and even though it's a very small section of the drawing those types of details are the things that are going to be the most interesting parts when people start really analyzing this as a piece of, of artwork And then notice how each time I add another layer of shadow to this background section here, that little decorative element comes forward a little bit more and gets a little bit more noticeable each time. So just to let you know, this is uh, this whole section of video that you're watching is six to seven hours long. Now, of course, I'm not going to air six to seven hours of video. Of video. I'm, uh, I'm going to cut this down. That's one of the reasons we're doing so much fast forwarding. Um, but we're going to be doing some jump cuts soon because this is really, really finicky work. And there's only so much of that you can watch before it's just boring. <laughs> so um, in all, the drawing took about 25 hours of actual pencil to paper, meaning I didn't count breaks, I didn't count uh, the time it takes me to dump video, which can sometimes take upwards of one to three hours. Um, I didn't count a lot of things, of, you know, me sitting back and, and fiddling with, you know, little minor details and things like that. If you, if you counted all that stuff together, we're talking 40, 50 hours worth of drawing. But actual pencil to paper time was about 25-ish hours. So the first video that I put out was uh, six to seven hours compressed down to, I think I got it down to like an hour and a half. This one right now, I'm looking at over two and a half hours of video, and I want to try to uh, compress it down even more. And I don't want to ramble about my process of video editing. That's dumb, boring stuff. But... Uh, I'm just letting you know because we are going to be jumping around and you're going to see large sections of this drawing done. Um, before I get too much further in that, I, I'm going back over this doorway with a blending stump and jet black um, extra soft charcoal. I've really loaded up this blending stump because I want to darken this, but I don't want it pitch black. So doing it with a blending stump really loaded up will take it up a shade but won't make it, you know, Wiley Coyote, uh, the when he paints the, the wall, <laughs> paints the little doorway on the wall, that pitch black look. I don't want it that black. Anyway, um, 
So yeah, I, we're going to be jumping ahead here in just a second because we, we don't want to spend an hour or two hours just watching this thing happen over and over and over again um, when it's just minor things. Like for instance, this shadow, the only thing I'm doing is darkening up the uh, top and the bottom layers of these ridge shadows to separate those out. It's good to know. It's good to learn to do that and how I'm doing it. But we don't want to watch something like that for the next hour. Um, it would be nice at one point, though, if if we could get to the point where, like, I didn't have a data cap on my uh, my internet, or if I kept the data cap but was able to afford the overcharges on breaking that cap, then to just upload like 15 straight hours of video, and then you can just watch it as you want. <laughs> I don't I don't know what insane person would want to do that. Uh, but at some point, if we ever get popular, then yeah, we can. I say we a lot, by the way, and I mean you and I, <laughs> because I'm not doing this on my own. Um, I can't do this without you guys watching. So when I say we, I'm talking about me and all of you. So if we as a group ever get popular and I ever start bringing an income off of this, we can consider doing some massive, you know, literal day-long live streams and videos and whatnot. Anyway, uh, I, I'm rambling a lot, and um, I, I want you to look up where I'm doing these ridges, though, why we still got this on camera. Uh, all I've done is I've just taken that blending stump while it was really, really dark with a ton of charcoal on it and very gently just laid in some horizontal lines, and now look at those ridges, the way they pop out and they become more defined. And now it doesn't just look like one big fat shadow that happens underneath that ridge it looks like it's got texture and layers and you can see the individual little ridges that run along there and we didn't do anything crazy we didn't go up and and meticulously lay those in with pencil or anything just took a blending stump and just made a line and that was it so i want to drop back behind this little decorative triangle thing here and I'm, I'm going to start darkening these shadows and start to define those a little bit more and you'll start to see that thing pop forward like we talked about earlier and we'll also do the same thing with the flat areas that are around this doorway because that's catching a little bit more shadow than what i originally put in and as i darken this area you'll notice it starts to just look a little bit better i mean i don't know any artful way to put that or poetic way to put it. It just looks better. Now there's a lot of these drawings like this that are going to boil down to that. You'll look at the reference photo and think it, that just looks too plain. You can use your artistic license to change things in your, your artwork. You don't have to, to perfectly mimic the, uh, the reference photo. We can actually change things up and, and I do change some stuff up here. I removed a bunch of signs and trash cans. I removed a bunch of people from the drawing. Uh, I changed a few of the shadows to lighten them up. I darkened up others. And, and we did do some changes. But the, the structural integrity of the building, which is, I know that's not what that phrase means, but the actual structure of the building is true to the, the photograph. That's the part we want. The small, tiny little details we can change here and there. Okay, so this is one of those areas that I do want to uh, skip up on. And I'm going to skip up about, oh lordy, let's skip up close to, I'm just looking at my video here while I'm doing this. Let's skip up about 30 minutes because right now, yeah, cool. Okay, so the reason that I skipped up this far um, is because we do have a lot more detail in there, but it's not much, right? It's like a couple little horizontal lines that define out the edges of those little decorative triangles. Then we have two horizontal lines that represent shadows below that. That balcony, all I did to make that was literally just make up and down slash marks. That's it. An up and down slash mark and then a tiny little dot that's offset on the top right of each one of those. I didn't meticulously draw in banisters and poles and all that stuff. It's just slash marks. So I don't feel bad about not showing you that, especially whenever we're going to be showing you a lot more of that happening elsewhere on the drawing because this does have a lot of balconies and banisters and stuff like that on it. 
Um, so right now I'm just finishing up the face of this on this top little section and that's almost entirely done and then we'll be dropping down uh, into this next section in the next video. So I think this has three or four stories on it. We're doing the very top two, the bell tower and then the dome section. And so the finishing touches are pretty much done on this little section and then basically what I'm going to be doing is adding detail as we work our way down. Uh, into this next section and that's where things can get pretty complicated too because now we're getting into a lot more ornamental type stuff. Yeah so let's just blast through this next part because all I'm doing is working on the next layer of shadows and ornamental stripes that happen below this uh, these balconies and stuff like that and the, again they're just all they are are horizontal shadows and that's it. Uh, we just need to make sure the shapes are true and that's about it. Um, so in the next video, I'll go ahead and fast forward through all this while we're talking about what's coming up. So the next video, we're going to be wrapping up this entire thing. I, I will be taking about 12 to 13, maybe 14 hours worth of video. And we're going to distill that into a single piece of video that's going to be an hour, hour and a half long. And the reason we're able to do that is because I've already shown you one wing, which is the left wing of the building. Um, the next video is going to be completing the face of this, and then we're not going to get into the details of the right wing because that's just repeating information. We will show you um, the fast-forwarded version, the time-lapse version of that being drawn so you don't think you're being cheated out of any videos. <laughs> Uh, but we're going to be mostly concentrating on this next video and wrapping this up by completing the face middle section of this one. Uh, so thanks for hanging in there. Uh, thanks for being patient with these because it's extremely hard to distill these videos down into just a, a watchable amount of time. If you have any suggestions on how you'd like to see these videos done, on what sorts of information would make them better, um, really, any suggestions you've got about these videos that can help me present this information to you more clearly and more con uh, concisely, um, please let me know in the comments. I will, I, I will always look at those because it helps me uh, learn how to better help you. So, yeah, if you've got any suggestions, please let me know. I will take a look at them and I will adjust my information accordingly. If there's anything that I just skip over, that um, you'd like to hear more about, let me know about that too because a lot of this time I'm looking at again, you know, 15 hours worth of video and trying to pick out the stuff that's going to be the most helpful. So anyway, thank you for watching. I appreciate it so much. I will see you on the next video where we'll be wrapping up this drawing and then we're going to move on to a fun project on the next one. So stay tuned. If you're not a patron, um, Patreon, uh, the people who are on my Patreon see these things two weeks before everyone else. So it's only nine bucks a month to get full tutorial videos like this two weeks in advance. So if you haven't uh, done it yet, please consider it. We're starting to slowly build up an audience and that will help me continue to make videos like this because I can't do this for free forever. <laughs> I just don't have the time. Anyway, again, thanks. I'll see you guys on the next video.